Good morning everyone. Normally I would brush my teeth like any hygienic person would after eating their breakfast, but I have a quiz at 9 and I'm running a little bit behind schedule because there's my reminder to take my quiz. As I was saying, I'm running a bit behind because vlogging, I gotta set up the camera, which is not something I normally do in my morning routine. And so I'm just gonna hop to it and take my quiz real quick. And then I guess I'll brush my teeth and do my makeup and all that stuff during my lecture immediately after. A while ago I made a video on TikTok complaining about how online school is literally the worst and you know what? I now have to concur with the disagreeers in the comments. It does have some benefits. Alrighty, before my next class starts, I'm going to skedaddle to BCAF or Bruin Cafe, which is one of the dining halls that's open for takeout. And they usually go pretty freaking fast. And I'm going to try to go pretty freaking fast because I have a lot more classes for the rest of today. Normally I would find a nice aesthetic place. To Let me reset this shot. Normally I'd find a nice aesthetic place to eat outside, especially because the weather is so nice here in LA, but I have classes just like back to back to back today, so I'm just gonna sit in here and eat while I attempt to participate in my next discussion section. Luckily, today is Friday, which means they have the delicious breakfast burritos that are my favorite thing that they have at the dining hall. Oh, hopefully you can hear me all right. One thing that I always experience due to like COVID safety measures, which don't get me wrong, I 100% support, is that I already talk kind of quietly normally. And so with the mask and the plastic layer that is meant to protect the dining hall workers, they just can't hear me at all. I'm like basically shouting and they're still like, repeat it, repeat it. It's so awkward. I, I hate human interaction. That's why I get all of my fulfillment out of my academic achievements. Speaking of which, let's get back to class.
finally finished my last class of the day. Woo woo! Almost every class I had today was like a small 20 person discussion session or like my French class was just a small class of 20 people. It's just infinitely more awkward to try to talk in class. One, because it's so self-consciousness inducing to see yourself in that little zoom thumbnail preview and be able to just look at yourself all the time. And because like when you want to talk, it takes so much extra effort. You don't just have to talk, you have to unmute and like mentally commit to being the 100% center of attention. Like there's an extra amount of like theatricality and intentionality behind talking on zoom versus just like blurting something out in person. Can everyone please just like stop partying, get vaccinated, don't be reckless. That way the pandemic can actually end and we can all do normal school. <sighs> Anyways, my French class is one of my, I sign myself up for someone else holding me accountable to this language practice, practice, but I also have some of my own self-directed language practice as well. And that brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Rosetta Stone. Lately, I've been using Rosetta Stone to try to learn Spanish, specifically Latin American Spanish, since the app has a distinction between, you know, Spanish from Spain and Spanish from Latin America. I live in California. I've recently moved from San Jose to Los Angeles. Clearly, these locations have names in Spanish. So many of the workers and the cool cultural aspects of the two cities I feel most closely tied to are based around the rich culture of people who have immigrated from Spanish-speaking countries, specifically in Latin America. And so that's one of the main reasons I feel interested in learning more Spanish so that I can be a little bit more culturally literate in these environments. And besides that, I also just really enjoy learning languages. I haven't gotten that far yet on Rosetta Stone though. One, because it took me way too long to figure out that each page of lessons is meant to be completed in one day rather than one lesson a day. I suppose if you're super busy, of course, you can just do one lesson a day, but I feel like I definitely have enough free time to be doing more, so I now know and have no reason not to be. But so far, one of my favorite features of Rosetta Stone has been the speaking exercises. Mm. I did Spanish immersion when I was in kindergarten through second grade, mm. but then I took French throughout all of high school and developed up to like semi-fluency and now whenever I talk in Spanish, my friends who took Spanish in high school tell me that I sound like I'm trying to say it in a French accent. So I really like that this feature, which fun fact is calibrated to your specific accent, is able to identify when I'm doing something completely wrong. If you'd like to join me on the process of learning how to say words correctly or just language learning in general, visit the link in the description for a discount on your Rosetta Stone subscription. And perhaps consider getting the lifetime Rosetta Stone subscription, which gets you access to all of the languages forever for only $179. Thank you Rosetta Stone for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to all of the other things that I want to get done today. I got this cute little tapestry. I already have the matching set version, I guess. That's the moon. And now my sun one has finally come, which I guess astronomically is not the most logical order to buy these tapestries in. Like the moon can't glow or like refract, refract, reflect. Is it reflecting or refracting? I can't remember anything from high school physics. I think it's reflecting. It can't reflect light without the sun to exist and provide those light rays in the first place. But you know what? I am just type A and one of those annoying, um, actually kids who wants things to be scientifically consistent when they really don't have to be. And the next goodie in this box is something I've been super excited about for a long time. And that is a Himalayan salt lamp. Why does that low-key remind me of those medical animations of inserting an IUD? Wow, this is fancy. 
this box would be really useful for me to store things in as like a free tray. Literally, it's free. I got it like as a PR sponsorship thing because I'm doing a series of sponsored videos with Casetify in the latter half of 2021. Some of you may remember I did one sponsored video with Casetify in approximately August of 2020. Then after that, I got a new phone and then I bought my own Casetify case because I didn't think they'd want to partner with me again because like imposter syndrome, I don't feel like I'm a real worker the influencer, I guess. But then they did, they did want to partner with me again. So now I have four fancy schmancy new cases. Shoot, I just realized all this random stuff has been in this shot the whole time. I'm so sorry. This is why I have imposter syndrome because I do things imperfectly and that makes me dislike myself. Sometimes, sometimes I'm trying to get over it. But this is so fancy looking. I'm gonna put this up on my decoration wall, man. This is cool as hecky decky. I don't know if I'm supposed to show these before like the sponsored integrations go live, but screw it. These are so cute. I want to show you them. This first one we've got is fruit sticker themed and it's designed by Bodil Jane, who is like a cool as heck graphic designer who I respect very much. I have a custom ultra impact case, which has like extra protective corners. And I got another compostable personalized case and I felt a little too obsessed getting two phone cases with just my name on it. So for this one, I imprinted grow. I feel like it's like symbolic cause like plants compostable, plants grow and grow is also like one of my favorite words. And then last but not least, I picked out this other ultra impact case. Now that I've unboxed all this stuff, it may also be a good time to uh, get started on cleaning the absolute disaster. dinner, I like to take a walk and appreciate the sights of the currently empty campus. Living in my daily solitary confinement makes me feel like I'm not really part of the world, but the world is really colorful and alive when I just stop to look around. The flowers are blooming and, without sounding too cheesy, it really feels like hope is in the air and I don't think it's just pollen because the plants that cause me seasonal allergies don't really exist in SoCal. Anyways, spring is here and summer's coming a knocking soon and with those, come the hopes of mass vaccination and returning to normal. But wandering around the residential part of the campus does feel like a ghost town. There's so many remnants of how lively this place must be on a normal year, but instead of the bustle of excited freshmen or stressed out seniors, it's just me and my footsteps and returning back to my dorm room to spend more time alone. <laughs> 